Dub Nation got a chance to witness the Warriors and Oracle from 1971 to 2019. During that time frame, Oracle hosted five NBA Finals, 230 consecutive sold-out home games, and 18,000 people per game for 12 straight seasons. Now, they play across the bay in the beautiful Manica Design Chase Center, an indoor arena which we at Koiski got a chance to visit for the latest episode of our Royal Key series. Check it out. What's going on world? Brand new episode of Royal Key there on your screen. I'm your host, George Hill, and I'm here with Lisa of Golden State Warriors. Lisa, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm gonna say this, I've seen many facilities. We are sitting in the best NBA facility I've ever seen in my entire life. I like to hear that. <laughs> the new facility here, it's right here, downtown San Francisco, the Chase Center. It's been seven years since you guys started this uh, journey. Yeah. Tell me about that entire journey. Yeah, we announced in May of 2012 that we were gonna move over to San Francisco. So it's been seven years. We're excited to finally be here today. Open quite a few concerts, NBA basketball already underway, but the journey's been incredible. There's been ups and downs along the way, but something I think all of us are really proud of and excited about and finally having these doors open. And it's something that I know personally, I'll remember forever and probably most of us, a once in a lifetime career opportunity for sure. Definitely, definitely. Now there are so many reasons that makes this the best facility in the NBA, but uh, one of them is the art. You guys are very very big on art here. There's actually a, an awesome piece here. Explain this piece. Quite a few different groups that we worked with. One of them, San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, and they loaned this piece. It's an Alexander Calder mobile, which you traditionally wouldn't see something like that in an arena or a stadium, but we have such a grand entrance. We needed something to kind of fill the space. and. They called us and thought, you know, this would probably be a good place to put it. And we are very excited and hope they loan it to us for a very long time. <laughs> so now we're in the JP Morgan Club, which is one of our club spaces. This is for floor seat holders. So we have a club space for every ticket in the building, upper level to floor seat. Everyone has a club space that they can go to. You mentioned art earlier. What I love about this space is it's from the JP Morgan Art Collective and they worked with a group out of Oakland, the Creative Growth Collective, and they work with mental wellness patients. And so everyone has some sort of disease that they are working through or disorder or something. And so they've created every single piece in this place, which I just think is beautiful. It's not just the SF MoMA or the big international artists. We have a lot of local people and people that just need some exposure and help or a place to go and just be creative. And they get to show their artwork here at Chase Center. Now, Lisa, you're born and raised in the Bay Area, Bay Area native. Why is art so big here? I think it's just part of our culture. Similar to food and beverage, which I'm sure we'll get into too, that food here is really important to San Francisco and the Bay Area. And I think it's a way to be creative and the Bay Area, in my opinion, is one of the most creative spaces. And so we wanted to make sure that Chase Center reflected that and reflected the entire Bay Area with art being a, a big part of it. So now we're in the Google and Accenture courtside lounges and along the entire hallway is more artwork from sports and the arts, local people that created these pieces for us. And these are one of our sweet offerings. We have three different sweet offerings. This is the courtside lounges. So you have a hospitality space underneath, and then you have seats in the sixth and ninth row. So no live view of your hospitality space, but pretty darn good seats out in the bowl. Right, right. And then in this area right here is the wine, I guess, bar. And every lounge has their own butler, right? Yeah, every lounge has their butler. They have their own wine vault. So you can imagine, you know, people, especially in the Bay Area, Napa's right up the way. Like, yeah. you know, you have wine that you like. In the courtside lounges, we have artwork from Sports and the Arts we work closely with. I think there's 33 local artists that have created these signature pieces displayed all up and down the hallway of courtside lounges. 
all around our suite level concourses. And then from the courtside lounges, so the hospitality room that I was showing you all, basically a 10 to 15 second walk right around the corner, up a couple stairs, and you have seats in the sixth to ninth row. Now, Lisa, how can one play basketball with this UFO sitting right here? <laughs> Luckily, I think it's high enough. It doesn't get in their way at all. Biggest scoreboard in the NBA? The biggest surface area content in the NBA, yeah. So as far as LED boards go, I think it's 75 million different LEDs that we have in the scoreboard. Really just to provide our fans with more stats, more content. We were a little limited at our old arena. Right. And so now building something new, we had the ability to create something that really gave them more of an opportunity to have a good fan experience or a better fan experience. And we think this is definitely gonna be able to do that for yeah. them. Now you mentioned off camera that even though it's now in San Francisco, all of the Oaklanders are still coming over here, right? Yeah, we have 70% of our season ticket holders came and signed up for memberships here. So, you know, you weren't quite sure where it was gonna net out, but 70% is, is a good number and we're excited about it. I mean, Oracle was special and we wanted to keep the intimacy that Oracle had here. So 70% of our season ticket holders, it's the people that makes the venue so great, you know, but we also lowered the amount of tickets that we have. So rather than 19,500 at Oracle, we have 1,800 here to make sure we kept that intimacy. So it'll still be nice and loud when our team takes the court. So now we're at the BioFreeze Performance Center, which is the home for our players. Their practice facility houses their courts, their weight room, locker room, film room, food, all that good stuff. And the photography sticks out to me. I mean, you guys have the transition from, you know, the old to the new. And this is under the Chase Center, right? It is. It's underneath. So if you're walking around, you wouldn't realize that this is tucked in here. But it's still grand and big. It's more space than we had when we were in Oakland. They did a really good job. Kirk Lakeup and the players were spearheading this process to make sure it's what they needed. Now Coach Kerr's office is up there. Yep. Uh, what else is going on? So our assistant coaches and we have a balcony for guests or anyone that coach or Bob want to invite to practice. And then Bob Myers, our GM's office is over to the right. So all kind of all basketball operations staff up there. So this is our players weight room area, training area. So everything kind of off the basketball court, all their performance work, all of that happens right here. Describe this here. This is pretty interesting. Yeah, it's just a view of um, a graphic of San Francisco. You know, it says Golden State and that's truly who we are. And we want to make sure that everyone knows we're the Bay Area team, but we are in San Francisco. So you'll see little nods of, of different pieces of the Bay Area. And this one happens to be San Francisco. Right, right. And without forgetting the past, because here in the locker room, there are some nods to Oracle. There are. If you walk in and look up, you see a resemblance of our old arena. We spent 47 seasons there. So it's yeah. a really important piece of our history and something that we definitely want to recognize and bring with us. So that's to the ceiling. And then when you look down, this is actually floor from our 2015 championship. They say you can only walk on it. I don't know if it's true, but if you are part of that championship or if you have a championship, I still need to confirm it 100%, but that's the rumor going around. I wouldn't want to walk across this with Draymond in the in the locker room. I think I'd do whatever Draymond says. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> now into this area. Yeah, it's a lot of recovery work. There are float tanks and cryo, hydrotherapy, all of that. In the back, there's one of the pools that has a treadmill underneath. You know, these guys work hard. They deserve definitely, definitely. some good stuff. I think it's funny they have little rubber duckies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty odd. Playful at heart, you know? <laughs> So we're still in the Players Campus Area Biofreeze Performance Center and within the locker room just past it, we have a barbershop. So there's two chairs in there so the guys can get the haircuts whenever they want, make sure they look good. And then down here we have a sauna, a steam room, players lounge, full kitchen, and my favorite, the kombucha bar. All right, Lisa, the Warriors need their snacks, all right? And I'm seeing a, a Warriors trail mix. Yeah, it looks like it. I think anything they want, they'll figure out a way to, to get it for them. They deserve it. They work hard. <laughs> Guys have, what, breakfast, lunch, and dinner in here, I would assume, sometimes? I think pretty much breakfast and lunch. Dinner is available depending on what's going on that night. We have a full kitchen staff that knows all of their diets and eating habits and what they like to eat. And Players Lounge, just a place for them to come and relax. I mean, these guys have a lot of demands on them, so giving them a space that's just theirs that they can come and hang out in. And then an added fun of the 
kombucha yeah. bar, which is big in the Bay Area. Right, right. Explain what that is for, for viewers who don't know what kombucha is. What, what is this? I'm not an expert in kombucha. So uh, my knowledge of it, though, is it's like a probiotic type drink, but it's a bacterial drink that um, is supposed to be really healthy for you. Yeah. Tastes really good. Um, <laughs> variety of different flavors. The guys liked it. We had it in Oakland and they wanted to bring it over. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for giving us a tour of the Chase Center and also the Performance Center. Again, best facility I've seen in the NBA. Awesome, no, no problem. Happy to have you, thanks for coming. Special thanks to our presenting sponsor, Private Label NYC. Check out how they're changing the way you travel on their website, Private Label NYC, and their social media. Now you're a man of many collections. We will be here for like, what, two or three days yeah. if you had to show us all of them. But what do you have to show us first? I'm a big OKC guy. Kind of went crazy on Nike IDs. The KD6 is my favorite uh, model here. I have over 55 pairs of the KD6. I guess most popular one that I have is uh, this Grinch for the KD Chroma option that came out a couple yeah. of years ago. What the LeBron 9. This is one of the best ones. It doesn't get a lot of credit because there wasn't a wide release of it. The Fruity Pebble Force. This is a shoe that I was lucky enough to get. It is in great condition. I've worn it plenty of times. My Power Ranger setup. These are all Mosh Customs. It's got that gold toe on there. I have not worn any of the Power Ranger Customs yet. I feel like this is more of an art piece. I want to display it. I have some legacy Power Ranger collector items that I would really like to display with these. The uh, maize yellow, women's maize yellow. It, this is the one that I really, really enjoyed. This was the hardest shoe of the whole set to get. And you got the saber tooth tiger on there. My favorite shoe of the whole set. We use the Flint 13s, the Blue Ranger. We got the Triceratops on the toe and on the tongue, the gold medallion. 